<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Could you get him out of here? <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Train World TV. How's it going, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we got our friends from Canada here today. We got Jason Trump. Oh, he's from Canada. He's from Connecticut. No reason to be insulted. Well, from Connecticut. So, and my father, of course, Ken Sr. And today we're talking all about Rapido trains and just a little pre-warm up on Rapido trains. They have been for, in the market for a while, but they have really starting to hit home runs yep. and skyrocket yep. with product. Thank so you. if you haven't heard of them, you should by now, because um, they're making a lot of American product now and a lot of cool announcements, a lot of uh, excitement in the industry. And it all starts with Jason and uh, with his team. And yes. uh, let's roll through some product, Jay. Well, I think the most important thing to discuss is my awesome bell bottoms. I just showed them. <laughs> yeah. so they that, let you across the border. No, that, 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 that's what does it, right? People buy our stuff because of the bell bottoms. I'm convinced of that. As soon as I saw that, I said, man, Canada's way behind. <laughs> no, at least we didn't wear a Star Trek uniform. We got our first right. jet airplane last Tuesday. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, so we, we have a lot of stuff. You're right. There's a lot of American stuff we're doing, and, the, and that's really been spearheaded uh, both by Bill, especially. I mean, people don't realize that Rapido is a team. Uh, we've now got 10 people full time uh, huh. here in North America, plus we got a lot of people in China. And, uh, and Bill has been with us for nine years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a lot more here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's really spared a lot of the American stuff. Now, um, our, one of our newer project managers, a fellow named Gareth Bayer, he's all, the guy's British, but he's obsessed with American trains as well. So mm -hmm. the two of them together really okay. are pushing forward yep. our whole American line, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and we have a bunch of those here. But one of the fun things with this team too is that everybody has a slightly different focus. Everybody has a slightly mm -hmm. different interest. So our uh, product discussion meetings can be a bit of a free-for-all, but okay. we end up coming up with some really good We're cancelling everything and just doing British double-decker buses from now on. <laughs> in the last meeting we said you don't have any say in yeah. <laughs> Well, it's actually it's funny, I, I, when we started out, it was always just me, right? And right. then Bill came on board as my, my second project manager, now there's the two of us. Um, and so it, now we've got five project managers, but then it was, you know, we did everything, just the two of us. Right, right. Um, so now because the company has grown, I don't have time to do right. all yeah, the yeah. project management anymore. Right. So I've now just got like turbo train, British buses. That's, yeah. my, that's my stuff. Yeah, okay. I let okay. them do all the rest. Right. Right. Yeah. So someone yeah. goes online and says, hey, Jason, that's a really amazing FA2. It's like, great, I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like anything. It's a team effort, and yeah. you guys obviously have the passion for trains, right. and that's right. a good thing. Once yep. you got the passion, you're not looking at the clock. I got to go home. Anything like that. Everyone, everyone at Rapido is a model railroader, except mm -hmm. for Janet, mm -hmm. um, who is our, our bookkeeper controller, yeah. and except for my wife. But everybody else at, at Rapido is a model. My my wife has been around it so long, married uh, almost 18 years. It's osmosis. Good. She is now like it's, she we, driving here. Okay, she says. Hey, hey, this is a Connecticut uh, commuter train over there. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> she noticed it. And I, of course, I think I don't think that's Connecticut because we're Long Island. But anyway, so it was like, you know, but she noticed the commuter train, right? So, yeah. so she's got it by osmosis. Uh, but we're all modelers. And that means that everyone comes to the table as a modeler and they, they say, you know, um, hey, why don't we do this? What are the, that's how we ended up doing these fishbowl buses, which right, have proved right. to be yeah, yeah, one yeah. of our biggest selling products ever, the yeah. fishbowl bus, mm -hmm. um, the, the new look, because yeah. that was where Tan Darnell kept on hiding like bus books mm -hmm. on my desk so that I just yeah. uh, walk Hey, Dan, why don't we ever do that fishbowl yeah. bus? <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's his fault. So, well, let, you know, hand me the bus. Let's talk about that a little bit. This is uh, just came out within yes. the last uh, This actually, weeks. this one, Boston, hasn't come out yet. It's on the water. Okay. They just okay. left the factory. Just that in as a sample. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you make them two ways, with lights and without. Is right. that it? Okay. That's right. And, uh, yeah, I was very impressed with the lights. It's a pretty cool thing. Well, the lights yeah. one, you know, in future, we're going to know that they, they massively outsell the regular ones. But the okay. great thing about these buses is it's the first model bus that's ever been approach like a model train so our you know our trains are yep. super crazy right. detailed right. um and and so we actually did a 3d scan of real bus so we can get the shape and that's where you do it you actually scan in the bus with lasers right mm -hmm. we did that and we discovered that every other bus manufacturer that a model one of these in any scale is wrong they went off of 2d drawings and they made it like a box okay right yeah. but the actual thing is like it's very curved it's very tubular mm -hmm. so we're the first model to ever have that but then you know most model buses in fact all 
don't have don't have they have no rivets. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. You right. look at a bus, there's like thousands of rivets on there, right? So to, to do this bus, Dan Darnell was counting rivets for three months, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's it's got and then we just see like where we've got the uh, the standy windows on some, we have no standy windows on others. This one's mm -hmm. got the double stream doors. We're about yeah. to announce the, the New York style bus with yeah, the yeah. single stream doors, yeah. you know, yeah. and we're gonna do the bus ceramic advertisements. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's like approaching the bus just like a model train, mm -hmm. right? And and it makes a huge difference because the the bus guys yeah. never seen this before. Yeah. So beautiful. when we first announced yeah. it, only the train stores were ordering them saying, well, you know, well, we know Rapido makes great trains, we'll order the bus, right? The the, the die cast collect, ah, who is it? It's too expensive, yeah. right? Yeah, then they, now we're getting all these die casts that we've never heard about, excuse me, uh, we'll take 500 of your buses, like, <laughs> yeah. we have four left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, this is the most accurate bus made. It is, no, there's yeah. never been, mm -hmm. it's the first, and, and we're actually now, you know, I joke about the British buses, we're now designing the first, the most accurate British bus ever wow. made in okay. a small scale. There is one that's like this big, that's really mm -hmm. accurate. Um, but but the small ones, you know, with the rivets, with the 3D scan, with the mm -hmm. full interior, with uh -huh. the lighting, all that stuff. North American buses, British buses. Like, you know what? I feel really strongly that we're all hobbyists, whether mm -hmm. you're into vehicles, yep. whether you're into model trains, mm -hmm. we're all, we all have the same nerd gene. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> God, I'm sorry if you think you're cool. We're not, okay? We are, like, we love, we, we love things like this. We get excited over hoppers, okay? Yeah. So, you know, we all have that, that mm -hmm. we're all the same. And so uh, why, if, if the super detail and the accuracy appeals to the model railroader, obviously it's gonna appeal yeah. to, to the bus collector, yeah. Yeah. right? That also happens in like subway trains, we get a lot of the just the transit guys. They're not train people. They transit guys, and they tell me they nitpick and they say this and this, <laughs> and they say that's accurate, that's accurate, yep. and and they buy probably more than fifty percent of the the subway right. stuff. Well, themselves. they I I love the New York subway. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, you know, I used to live in England, and when I was in London, I'd avoid the tube because they were yeah, like dirty yeah, and yeah. smelly. But the subway is so awesome, yeah. and where you got the four tracks and the expresses yeah. flying through, and my wife was trying to have a conversation I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we got buses. Let's take a deeper look into the HO product. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the things we brought with us today, uh, the factory just air freighted in some samples. These are New Haven parlor cars. They're actually on the water. We'll be here in a couple weeks, be shipping out, but we got a few for our show coming up this weekend. Those are completely sold out. It, That's it's great. A, it's amazing. You and didn't order enough. <laughs> I, 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 I hope you get them in soon because otherwise there's going to be a lot of uh, upset people out there. They're going to arrive at our warehouse in about 10 days. So they're literally on the slow boat from China, right. but they're on their way. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, the detail on these things yeah. are incredible. This Our man. models look the best if they derail and fall down a hill. <laughs> <laughs> they look amazing. <laughs> and another thing I just noticed, you look at the interior on here, yep. and there's color in there. It's not yep. just your standard tan color. They got red seats in here with a little detail on top with the uh, and the rest, back. Yeah. Andy McCaster is yes. this see through armrest too. Right. Very important on armrest. I'm impressed. I'm and, impressed. And on these cars, we even discovered that the New Haven had them delivered with gray seats in the middle and blue yeah. seats on the end. So wow. the model has that as well. Wow. Wow. Um, have them with skirts on the side, without skirts. Mm -hmm. um, and in Penn Central and Amtrak as well for the cars that lasted at Amtrak, so the Amtrak modelers can use these as well. Very nice. Okay, are these lighted cars? They cars? are. Absolutely. All lighted? They all lighted? Light, yeah, all, all the cars. Full, full interior lit. Yep. Okay. And the, uh, the end gates and the diaphragms there. You yeah, know, diaphragms work. are actually working diaphragms here? Yeah. yeah. Etched brass gate on the end. Yeah. Um, our yeah, feeling really. about pass. People, some people don't get why we put all the detail on there, and our feeling is that this is a, it's like a museum quality model, it's a scale model, it's an accurate rendition, and if you were to buy a model Jaguar, right, you'd expect that when you pop open the hood, the Jaguar engine's inside, right? So, honestly, underneath the passenger car, all that stuff, that's what makes the car work. Right, So, right. A, uh, there's a number of us on staff at Rapido where we crawl, out, Dan, Darn, uh, Dan Garcia and myself, you get under a passenger car, you turn the door, I can tell you, you know which one's a junction box? Which one's a Jenna motor? Which one is the uh, is the the water raising reservoir or the combined reservoir? The D22, all that stuff, right? That's what makes a passenger car so unique and not just being a go kart yeah. on rails. Yeah. So if you if you have three blobs under there, it's like leaving the engine out of your Jaguar. Well, also that's what makes Rapido different. So, uh, you know they want that high quality, the true uh, modeler's quality. So uh, kudos mm -hmm. to you guys from separating mm -hmm. yourselves Thank from you. the pack on that. Yeah, yeah it's the, the absolute best 
Maybe. model car on the, on the market that I Thank can you. tell. Well, I know yeah. we're talking about HO, but since we're over here, we're moving forward. Uh, the other item, these are the N-Scale uh, 8600 New Haven coaches, uh, which was the first release in HO. We're now offering them in N-Scale. Uh, you can still order these for mm -hmm. another couple weeks. I think the deadline is February 9th. Um, these are hand-painted samples, so please don't do okay. too close a look at the hand paint job. You know, I, I used to think I could paint stuff until I started doing N scale. Now, you know, I can't see it. Um, People but, photograph N scale models and blow them up to like a 17-inch monitor. Hey, the paint's a bit off. Yeah, the yep. paint's really off. On these. <laughs> uh, but same level of detail underneath. Uh, yep. Etch, still etch gates on this yep, side, yep. still lit. Same same thing as the HO in this model. But this is this is our big announcement here. Yes, it's this early uh, 3D printed sample. Yep. So I, we drum roll. <laughs> we announced last year, and I think you were giving me a hard time about announcing that we were making an announcement. Okay. But, uh, we announced last year that we were going to do the New Haven EP5 jet, which was the New Haven electric from the 1950s and 60s. Um, that is now fully designed. Um, this is a 3D print just to prove out the that everything works properly and also to have something to show at the Springfield show coming up this weekend. Okay. Um, this will be powered, fully lit, working pantographs on DCC. Uh, we'll have sound on it. Um, you know, we're very... Can I see that? Yep, sure. This right, has never been seen before. We're trying to get the pantographs working on DC too, right? On Train World yeah. TV. Very this is nice. the first time this has been shown. Mm -hmm. Now, you know we're big on recording our own sounds, so I've asked a couple experts what these things sounded like, and I'm told I really need to find a good Hoover vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you guys got anything coming yeah. around the shop here? Maybe we can do our sound recording. Yeah, yeah. You know, we do, uh, have a, we do have a TARDIS at the office. We can head back. Perfect, okay. Um, but, yeah, this is the, the first 3D print. Um, we'll have, we've announced road, name, road names, okay. road numbers, paint schemes, and so forth. That's on the website now. You guys have that. Yeah. You, we can start yeah. taking orders anytime. This is going to be a home run for you guys because I don't think anyone's ever done uh, EP5 in HO In before. HO and plastic, and, no. And especially at this detail, you're saying the pantographs work, yep. correct? So Absolutely. It's, uh, they'll, they'll, go, is, they'll go up and down by themselves. Right. Yeah. Wow. This, wow. This is an engine. I mean, there, there were only 10 of them. They ran a, just in the, in the northeast here. Right. Um, but back in the 50s, there were two different tin plate versions, so so many people grew up knowing these things. Right, right. Um, right. That it, it's just become an iconic engine. When we announced that, I mean, the, the phone started just ringing and the email started mm. flying in when we announced that we were going to do it without even any details on it. So. Yeah, it's like our, our New Haven Osgood Bradley coaches. Um, back in the, the 1940s and 50s, those were the Gilbert. Uh, you got a Gilbert train set, it had those Osgood Bradley coaches in them. Right, right. right. right? So people call them American Flyer coaches, but they're not, that wasn't the official name of them. They were just called Osgood yeah. Bradley, Pullman Bradley, you know, lightweight yeah. coaches. Yeah. So uh, they they sold really, really well because everyone remembered having them. Yep, yep. You know, yep. And their S, their S scale trains. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Uh, this uh, is, this a is a gonna be a, uh, a definitely a big splash in the market and yeah. people seeing it at the train show next week are just gonna be, uh, Go crazy for it. It's, it's a real signature item, but that is one of the things that makes us different. Is we go out for the signature items, we go out for right. the turbo trains and the FL nines and the EP fives and, and the, the twelve hundred RSs and the oddball stuff that, that nobody else really. And you guys don't hold back when you do it. You, no. you want all the details when you're explaining these passenger cars. If we're going to do it, we're going right. to do it right, and we're going right. to do it. That's the only way we do it. Okay. Yeah. Now it, I noticed big trucks on here. Will it yep. run on eighteen radius? Yes. Okay. Yep. Very good. Of course, of course. Yep. Uh -huh. You know, it's very important for us that people can actually run our trains. Right. Um, so our passenger cars are really. You may have to put a longer coupler on for 18 trays. We include those in the box. Oh wow. Sometimes okay. if there's a steam pipe there mm -hmm. that was is you know we'll say in the instructions you might want to nip that steam pipe to get around 18. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we'll do 24 out of the box, but 18. But we want people to be able to run our trains. Yeah. Uh, when we brought out our, our first British train, which is a, a, a tilting experimental train, you know, it seemed like a good idea. To yeah, well, <laughs> it took us an extra year to develop it to be able to go around a 17 and a quarter inch radius curb, right? Because guys in England have that okay. tight curb. Yeah. Right. So if somebody's got the four by eight sheet of plywood, we still want them to be able to enjoy our models. So good. all of them, with yeah. with some modification can go all, all on 18 radius curb. Okay. Now I noticed there's uh, wipers, windshield wipers on here. Are they going to operate? <laughs> We gotta draw the line yeah. somewhere. Can we make a note somewhere? Yeah. I would think about it. This is what you these know, guys are looking yeah. for. That that, that different thing. We, we are we're running out of DCC functions. Okay. Okay. I, can't, I, can't, I can't give you any details yet, but okay. there is a project that is in design that we will have samples uh, sometime in 2018, okay. um, which goes to that level 
of realism mm. wow. with doors opening up. That's all. I'll yeah, leave right. it at that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it's gonna it's gonna have that element of and that's also has been taking a real long time to develop. Oh, well, that's and that's. Dan Garcia at the office. I don't want to deal with the warranty request on that. <laughs> My door's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they did on the real thing. That's too. real. That's just that's an actual real thing. Exactly. <laughs> what will they come up with next? Yeah. Anyway, just so wait. Yeah. Some, some other stuff that we've got, uh, like for example, the, the order deadline's coming up in March. Uh, this is the RDCs. Now, this is a, a very early sample of uh, the RDC 3. It's missing all of its little extra bits. It's got, it's got, it doesn't have its mailbag capture and stuff. But the RDC 3 and the RDC 2, the RDC 3 is, is you know, a rail diesel car was one of our biggest selling models yeah. ever. Um, and that we just did the RDC 1. That was all coach mm -hmm. seats. Yep. RDC 3 has got a baggage section and an RPO, right. right? Plus a coach section. So it's all complete train in one. The RDC 2 um, has a, uh, a coach and a baggage section, right? And these, um, uh, these have uh, a number of different paint schemes that we're putting on them, like they, that we've never done before. You know, we've got the, mm -hmm. the Western Pacific, for example. Uh, Santa Fe. Santa Fe had a two RDCs that were in a couple of big crashes. They rebuilt them, and they were there. There's a very famous set. These two RDCs yeah. of DC 191 and 192. So we're actually tooling the accurate bodies and ends, and okay. we, so far we're taking advance orders until the end of March. We found that the orders for the Santa Fe two set are greater than all the other paint schemes combined. And you wonder, why do people do the war bonnet? Why? Because, oh my God, more than half the sales are for a war bonnet. It was two, they had two. It was it, they had two RDCs. But these guys haven't put their Long Island order the, yet, so. those, those paint schemes are beautiful. Yeah, that are. and also the blue uh, paint scheme on that. Right, is, right, is right. Beautiful but, as well. But you know, it, it's, it's the fact that we've gone to the effort of tooling up the new body the new ends, the new interior. We actually had to do a new floor, wow. right? To get the, wow. you know, it's, it's got, it doesn't have the standard steps. It's got a plated over step. So we redesigned the end so it could have that both on the RDC, the DC-191 and DC-192. So going to that level of detail, we didn't, it's not good enough to take our stock RDC-2 and paint it in Santa Fe because it's not accurate. Right. It okay. actually wasn't, it was an RDC-1 that they rebuilt into a 2. And it looks so like the, nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the, the door is a different place. The completely different in the wrong spot. Exactly, all that. exactly. Um, the RDCs also, you know, we've got our, our really great, uh, this, this, this has got our proper stainless steel finish on it. These ones we painted in the shop. There's a slight There's a difference on it. RDC, There's right. a production RDC there. Um, another thing is that we were the first ones to ever do a full-length HO scale uh, RDC phase 2. That's got the uh, different design. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just like our, our bus, we did a 3D scan of the original RDC, okay. you yeah. know, to so get that. So that we're very excited about the RDCs. You can still order those. The, um, the other thing we did with the RDC that's a lot different is it has a complete underfloor drive system, so you can actually see through it. It's like a, a powered passenger car. Yeah. You can you've got, got full, full seats, seats, full interior in it. Yeah. Yeah. Right away across. Previous okay, models it's always had a big hocking motor big, sitting right in the exactly. middle. Exactly. Right, right. Or a rubber band. Right. Yeah, yeah. They, but they those were fun. Drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still got rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fit the Rapido model, sir. <laughs> so uh, right up the front there, which Bill is going to tell you about, is our, our NP boss car, 10,000 sure. series. Okay. So, so we're going to talk about, th these are our new Northern Pacific box cars. These are coming out, uh, be in production this summer. Uh, order deadline is coming up on these. April 30th. April 30th, right. Um, these cars were built in the 1920s. They lasted up until the late 1960s. They ran everywhere. It's a very useful car. It's never been done before in plastic. Um, these are basically updated final production samples. They're hand painted, so don't pick on the paint scheme too much. Uh, two different brake, uh, brake systems. You've got the K brake, which was the World War II and earlier, and the AB brake, which was post-World War II up to the end of service. Um, different paint schemes basically to cover from their delivery period right up through the end of, end of their service on the NP. That was another project that expanded after we did it when we discovered that they changed the sheathing on it around World War II. That was helpful. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> okay. Very nice. It's got the accurate sheathing for the transition era. Correct. Very nice. Yep. And then your hoppers. That you're just starting to ship, right? Yep. These are, these are just shipping. You want to talk about the harbors? You want to? Yeah. The yeah, these, uh, are, these are your babies. I'll come, can I come on? Yeah, can I sure, come on? Do, sure. do I have to squeeze in with Ken? There, there we there. go. How's it going? <laughs> uh, right. So the cylindrical hoppers. These are uh, 3,800 cubic foot cylindrical hoppers. Um, we, 
unbelievable how popular these have been. It's, it's been crazy. our biggest selling yeah, freight car by a factor of two. Um, and uh, with our first shipment's already come and gone. Our second shipment's going to be arriving soon. Um, and people say, well, hey, I've seen that lifesaver car. I got one myself. Well, you have something called an inaccurate lifesaver car. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was only ever applied to this 3800 car. If you compare it to the other manufacturers, and there have been three 4550 cars, which are the, uh, there's Intermountain, there's Bachman, there's, there's four. There's Walther's and there's uh, Not that we're going to mention any competitors car. or anything. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's, there's a couple of those are good cars, right? Yeah, but they're just but not accurate for this. They're too long. I yeah. mean, this is a shorter car, a smaller car, right? So this is the only accurate one for the lifesaver because it's a shorter car. I've mentioned <laughs> it's a shorter car, right? And uh, and then we got you know, other more typical paint schemes. But even though you see this, this is a very laid back pro car paint scheme, right? But it's a shorter car. Right, so um, yeah, it's uh, that's proved very. We're very happy with how that's turned out. Um, it's our first attempt at doing a, any sort of hopper. I'm amazed by the hopper guys. Right, it's like I, I don't want the 4227 hopper. I want the 4228 hopper. Well, how's that different? Well, you know, it's a, a quarter inch longer and it's got an extra rib. It's like oh, I can't tell apart. <laughs> right, so I'm not blaming you guys for not knowing the fact that these are shorter cars than what you're used to, but they are and they've done well. But what's the difference? They're shorter. Oh. <laughs> right. Other stuff that we have to talk about is the uh, probably the Amtrak uh, F40 cabin. Yeah. Um, we thought, you know, hey, we can do a, a more modern F40, right? All like we have to do is a new nose with yeah. the dish lights, and then our new friend, sides. Matt Donnelly at Amtrak says, "Hey, and you got the uh, the new sides too?" I was like, "What? <laughs> well, how about the the new fuel tank, the bigger fuel tank?" Like, oh. So that ended up being uh, a bigger fuel tank. It also ended up being new sides. Um, the, the steps are recessed on the uh, on the new F40s. Um, right. These are actually hand painted samples. Dan Darnell and Bill Schneider do all of our. This is this is Bill. In case you forgot, this is Bill. Um, do all of our uh, hand painting uh, of our samples, right? And uh, they do a beautiful job. Bill did the the box cars, and then uh, Dan did these F40s. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it's all new tooling with the working the working ditch lights, the larger fuel tank, etc. These operate up until about 2002 um, so you can have them uh, throughout your phase three phase four era layouts um, and then the, cabin, the current one right and then or you can get the cabbage so uh, a number of, of f40s we had the cabbage in mind from the start that's actually one of the reasons we chose to do a phase one body style on the f40 is that the most of the cabbages were came off of phase one f40s um, and the phase ones were the ones delivered back in 76 so a cabbage is short for cab baggage it's uh they they depowered uh took out the prime mover from the uh, f40s they put in a big uh, baggage area um, and then they did a whole lot of other modifications, like a lot of the stuff on the top is missing. There's just some uh, treads uh, step over there, you know, and they got the uh, big butt-eyed marker lights. They've got the, uh, the ditch lights, right? And what we'll do is it's, it's the, the real name is an NPCU, non-power control unit. So you have the, uh, the F40 or the P42 is at one end pushing, and this guy is a cab at the front. He's got full, these engineers have full control over the locomotive at the back. Or if, they, if, if, it's, uh, if it's at the back, it's just go along for the ride, right? Mm -hmm. It's a way to avoid having to turn your train at, at the end of the run. Um, and our model actually comes with power. It's DCC and sound or just uh, or, or, or DC powered. And it's the reason is simple um, is there's two reasons. Number one, uh, the only difference in cost for us, most of the cost is in assembly and decorating, which is the same if it's got a motor or not, right? But, uh, so the only difference in cost is like 10 bucks. Uh, so we figure people are gonna rather, uh, they're gonna wanna spend uh, $300 on a sound equipped model, uh, you know, or or it's like, or sorry, two hundred dollars on a DC model, or one eighty on a dummy, right? It makes sense just to have the motor in there. Another reason is um, if you've got a uh, a train full of Amfleets, you know that they don't run very well because they're all inside bearing and they tend to be like sleds. So having extra <laughs> power at the rear is actually that's oh, really? very very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you know, so you've got your uh, your working uh, strobes, and you, you if you press the 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 horn, your ditch lights flash. If you pet the bell, the strobe strobes go. The number boards are lit. They you've got working red markers when it's on the rear it's a really like it's, it's I, I hate the, the people still think cabbage is like caboose just to be a dummy on the rear mm -hmm. it's not okay it's a fully powered engine with all the lighting features and the sound so you can blow your horn you can blow your uh, uh, activate your bell etc etc it just you know, doesn't have the prime mover sound it just doesn't have the prime mover sounds but it does have the cab air conditioning sound okay and there are silly uh, sounds I'm assuming. there are <laughs> <laughs> no comment <laughs> Very nice, very nice. And right. let's talk also a big no. announcement, the no. N-Scale Turbo Train. N-Scale Turbo Train uh, is very close, uh, near and dear to my heart, the N-Scale Turbo. 
Um, I'm, uh, I'm a big turbo fan myself. I, wrote, I literally wrote the book on the turbo back uh, when I started Rapido. Um, and it was our first HO scale model and it, I think it won the award as the worst running HO scale train ever. All right, it would have been improved well, by a rubber band. <laughs> but you did the regear kit, which made it a moderately bad running. It was well. moderately bad running, but still pretty terrible. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's just say we've put that all behind us, and we've learned about how to make a, a model our, our locomotives. Uh, anyone who's bought them, they're very smooth running, very nice trains. Um, and so the turbo, as you can see by the sample over there, it's going around the test track. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's running quite nicely there. Um, the last turbo model brought out in N-Scale was a Bachman model in 1969. Which, as far as I can gather, where they, they sort of eyeballed it from photos. I don't think the windows are even the right shape. Um, so our, our turbo were, uh, obviously comes from the original blueprints. It's all accurate. Uh, this is our first test sample. If, we, if I hit it up to full speed, the, uh, the lights would be nuclear. You'd be able to see them from, from the moon. We're working, uh, we're on, working that. on that. <laughs> we're working on that. You know, but it's, it's, we're doing all different versions of the turbo. So there's a, an Amtrak turbo came. Originally it was USDOT and New Haven. Then it was Penn Central, then it was early Amtrak, then it was late Amtrak. We have tooled the accurate Power Dome cars, the accurate two different types of, of intermediate car ICs. And then we've done the Canadian version. We've got, again, the two different Power Dome cars for the Canadian one. They're different. And then you've got the coaches, the cafes, and the first class cars. Again, they're all different. Yeah. So Once again, we can't do anything easily. We can't do anything easily. It's all, uh, it's all complete. And hopefully we've got some nice B-roll we can put in now as you can get a close-up shot of the, of the train going around there. Yeah. Um, but they've got full interiors in the coaches and partial interiors in the, uh, the dome cars. We couldn't put a full interior there or it wouldn't move. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you need to have room for weight and room for your, I tell your you, engine. Stuff it's like smooth. That. Yeah, it's, really it's, smooth. Very, it's a very really smooth. smooth. And this is really just smooth. our first sample. It's going to have full sounds. The sounds come from the turbo, which was scrapped 27 okay. years ago. Okay, it's 20, 26 years ago. Um, and, and the reason that we're able to have, did I say 26? 36 years ago, okay. it, was 19, it was October 82. Um, the reason that, it, that, that the, uh, we have those good sounds is that uh, a very forward-thinking turbo fan who worked for Canadian National took out his Beta Max recorder and recorded the train in this last week of service, gave those videotapes to me, and I, I spent, back when we did the 8 show one, I spent uh, three months full-time just doing nothing but turbo sound. And we had to painstakingly, I say we, it was me, had to painstakingly recreate every like every click on that turbine, every whine, everything was all recut. Even the sound of the door chime and the doors, and it's perfect to the point where we have people who worked on the train would call, call us and say, you nailed it. So right, those right. sounds, all that work I put into that crummy HO model that never ran, they're, all that hard work's paying off with an, H, an N scale model that actually runs. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're yeah. very, very yep. proud of that. Very good, very good, very good. I'm impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we've got lots, lots of neat stuff coming up. The last thing that we haven't mentioned yet is you can still order it. Uh, it's a, it's a more Canadian interest. It's called the N Scale GMD One. Uh, it wins the award as uh, one of the most ugly engines ever produced. It's so ugly, uh, it's cute. It's so ugly, it's cute. It's basically a switcher with a short hood stuck on the end. Um, and uh, and we have a new run of GMD Ones that we're uh, okay. taking orders until the end of April. So, but definitely get your orders, and you can order them for you. So, okay. uh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Trainworld.com. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for taking the time out to bring all these samples here today. Yep. Um, so Thanks the important having. lesson is definitely put your uh, pre-orders in because this stuff, a lot of it's limited quantity. The other so, important thing is you have to wear bell bottoms. Yes. Can I yeah. show the bell bottoms again? Hang on, just look at the bell bottoms, eh? <laughs> 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 so, if, if you want Rapido trains, if you think Jason is highly entertaining, buy it from trainworld.com. He's off his mind. It's 24 7. Or it's if not you want to work at Rapido, you got to wear bell bottoms or a Starfleet uniform. Are you guys no, hiring We're doing that now. You're wearing bell bottoms. He's, yeah. he's wearing bell bottoms. No, I'm starting with them today. It, it, it's a good thing we work at Train World. <laughs> but thank you guys so yeah, much for nice watching and stay tuned. Thank Bye you. bye now. Bye.
Nope. Not even in the, the silver penny ones? Nope. Sorry, I ran out of time about 9 o'clock last night. Everybody